The little segment you just saw was completely made in iMovie. I got a lot of requests for doing a first person muzzle flash in iMovie. Now that little two seconds took about an hour of work, but once you get a hang of it, the process gets a lot faster and easier. This tutorial is going to require green screen footage. A lot of the time can be saved by making a good green screen, so it's very important that you know how to set up a good green screen. So I'm going to show you exactly the kind of footage you need to film. Now that footage was recorded using my GoPro camera. It's basically a helmet camera that a lot of sports use and things like that. It's a very good camera. But you can go around just doing a handheld just fine. Let me show you the type of footage you need. The first one is going to be exactly what your movie's going to be. With you not holding the movie prop. Just everyone else doing exactly what you want. Now, excuse me, this was recorded on my forehead and I accidentally put the camera upside down. Which is kind of funny, but... I'll show you how to fix rotating it. So basically, I just recorded with my forehead camera, my GoPro camera, the hallway. I just did some footage of the hallway, me looking down the hallway. The next footage I have is green screen footage. Now the green screen, I set it up outside. As you can see, it's a lot brighter. It's pretty good quality. I didn't take too much time into it. I just wanted to do the concept. And all I did was I stood a bit further back from the green screen and I just pretended to handle the gun. Once again, this is a fake gun. Make sure you're using fake guns. Never film with real guns. And what I'm going to be doing in iMovie is cropping out all the rest here. I'm just going to have the green screen footage. So those are the two types you need. Just do all your acting normally without a movie prop and then do a second scene of you walking around with the green screen and the green screen set up. And if you accidentally film upside down like I did, it's no big deal. So here is the final project in iMovie. As you can see, we have the muzzle flash, we have our gun, we have the hallway, and we have our sound effects. So I'm going to start this from scratch. I'm going to just do File, New, Project. I'm not going to select a theme. And here we go. Alright, so here we are. Here is the hallway footage. About 20 seconds of me staring down in the hallway doing uh, multiple takes. So I'm just going to highlight my footage. Drag it in place. As you can see, it's upside down. Well, no big deal. Click on the little gear, go cropping and rotation, and use these little arrows and turn it upside down. Click done. Now you have it upside correct. So that's our background footage. I am then going to take my green screen footage. Let's see, where is it? I'm then going to take my green screen footage, highlight the part I want. Drag it and drop it. Click green screen. And once again, click on the little gear. Click on cropping and rotation and flip it the correct direction. As you can see, that looks pretty ridiculous, right? We have our house, we have our hallway footage all spliced together. But remember, if you click on the green layer, click on crop, you can move these around and crop out all of the stuff you don't want to see. And then click done. And there we have it. We have the gun. Now we're going to have to fix the quality up a bit. As you can see, we have some green still showing a little bit. It appears as white. No big deal. Double click on your green. Click on video. You're going to move this over and just change the colors around till you get the look you need. And there we go. It looks a lot better now. And then one last thing I did was to make the footage a little more convincing because right now you can kind of tell that this is a separate element than this. What I did was I double clicked on the background footage, I went to video effect, and I changed it from day to night. Click done. 
now it looks a little more creepy and perhaps a little more convincing to the viewer. Again, this is just a tutorial to show you the concept. Spend the time to make it look the way you want. So I'm going to delete the rest of this footage here. We don't need it. So here we are. I have the hallway. Now, why did we add this layer first? Isn't this the foreground and the muzzle flash going to be more towards the middle and then the background layer? Yeah, you are, you are correct. You are correct. But I'm showing you this way for one main reason. We're going to need to be working on both at kind of the same time. So I'm going to single click my background layer. Right click, hit copy. Go to the end of the footage. Right click, hit paste. I have the exact same footage. This layer is going to be the muzzle flashes. So now we duplicated our footage so we had the hallway footage once again with the same video filters and in this segment we're going to be adding our muzzle flashes. Now my muzzle flashes come from Action Essentials 2. Action Essentials 2 is basically a $100 download that you can buy. Uh, just google Action Essentials 2 in the search bar and go to their web page and get the download. Now the thing is, it's $100. If you're gonna be spending $100 on muzzle flashes, I can't recommend that. I have to say absolutely no. Save your money and get a more powerful movie editing program than iMovie. iMovie has its limits. I've pushed iMovie very far in a lot of my videos and it just starts crashing after a while. So hopefully it doesn't crash again because this special effect is very labor intensive for iMovie. So anyways, to save you some money, and just so you can practice the first person muzzle flash, if you go to my YouTube page, my YouTube uh, channel here, on the side, it says free movie assets. If you click on that, open it up in a new tab, I think on page two or three, what I've basically been doing is making muzzle flashes for you. Now they don't have a black background, so they're kind of hard to see on the web page's white background. but let me see if I can zoom in on one here. I hope you can see it there with the yellow and the white. Well, basically, you can download those. I'll put the link in the description for this particular one. Just download that, and that'll work just fine as a picture. But for the tutorial, I'm going to be using Action Essentials too. I hope in the future to add some more muzzle flashes. I can't guarantee it anytime soon. They do take a while to make. So I hope the movie assets folder help you out. I'm going to now continue the tutorial here. What we're going to do is grab the muzzle flash we wish to use. These muzzle flashes do not come with a black background, which is one thing I love about Action Essentials 2. Drag it and click picture in picture. Now it appears in the upper right corner as this tiny little dinky thing. Well, we can now drag it and move it around. You can make it as big as you can, but as you can see, we just can't get it to line up with our barrel. Now the green screen footage here is going to help us with the reference footage of where our barrel is. So as you can see, it's kind of a one third from the edge there and about a fourth of the way up. So I'm going to try my best using the cropping by clicking on the little gear and trying to get it to line up. Let's see if that looks a little better. Let's see that. That probably would line up. Let's see here. Looks like it'll line up, at least close enough for the tutorial. So now let me zoom out of this. So now we have one segment of our video with the hallway and a gun, the other segment with the muzzle flashes. What I'm going to do now is go share, export movie. I'm just going to save it on the desktop as a new project. Export that. So now we have our footage exported. I'm going to drag it and put it back into the event library. Again, as you can see, this is similar to that multiple picture in picture in iMovie tutorial that we've been working on. That technique goes a long way in iMovie. So here it is down at the bottom. We have one segment with our gun and the other segment with our muzzle flash. I'm just going to drag the whole thing and put it into our project. 
This thing will pop up saying we've modified our project. We'll just hit OK. Of course we have. So I'm going to take the first part and just delete it. So we start out and right on the muzzle flashes. I'm then going to delete the muzzle flash segment that we edited. We don't need that anymore. Now I'm going to take the green screen footage and drag it over. Just hold down the mouse button, slide it over to our new footage. And let go of the mouse button. Now you can delete the beginning footage. All right, so now we can take a look at our footage, and oh, great, I missed it. All right, so as you can see, this is where practice makes perfect. The muzzle flash is supposed to be a little more to the side. It looks like I just missed it. Uh, no big deal, just hit edit undo a couple times and re-export it, and make sure we line up that muzzle flash a little better. But as you can see, this is the concept here that we're going to be getting at. Now, one other thing, um, I'm going to go into specifics about doing a muzzle flash. I've already done a tutorial about it before, but a lot of people want me to remake it. So I will, you know, edit a new one. So I'll send you a link to my old one just so you get some idea of what we're going to be doing. But here's where the details make the muzzle flash a little more convincing. So you see this little five second bar here? I'm going to drag it way to the side so we see more frames per second. I'm going to take where a muzzle flash is, highlight a small segment of it, right click on a tiny little segment, hit cut, right click between the two segments, hit paste, and now we have the muzzle flash completely singled out. Now what I'm going to do is for this tiny little segment, I'm going to double click on it, go to video effect, and then I'm going to hit glow. Why do I do that? Well as you can see the room is dark, and when the gun goes off, boom! The light turns on there because the muzzle flash acts as a light source. And then it goes dark when the muzzle flash goes away. Now, as you can see, the green screen kind of turned a little more goofy here. So you can just double click on your green footage, go to video, and you can edit that up a bit, make it a little better, changing the contrast. Changing the blue, red, and green grain. Make that green screen a little more convincing. And, yeah, sorry I missed the muzzle flash, but um, just do your best to get as close as you can. This takes a lot of practice. So, in summary, you're going to be making two movies for one movie. You're going to be doing one movie completely without the gun. In first person view, everyone's going to be acting like normal as if they're being shot, as if they're sh as if they're shooting and fighting, taking cover. And then after you film that, you're going to be doing the exact same movie, except you're going to be standing in place in front of a green screen with a gun. Now, please use safety. Make sure everybody around you alert the police. Make sure everybody knows that you're using movie props things like that. We don't want to, anyone to get in trouble, getting hurt, or anything like that. So let your neighbors know, let the authorities know. Be safe. Uh, set up your green screen as best as you can, and just practice this effect. Start out with short movies, like 5 seconds, 10 seconds. Post them up. Just let people know, like, hey, I'm practicing this effect. Please help me out. And uh, you can send me a link. I will be more than happy to give you some advice. So let me know what you think. If you don't have a movie prop gun, well, just use your fingers. Who cares? Use your hand. Shoot lasers. I don't care. Let's see what you guys can make. So I hope that helps you out. It's the best I can come up with for the easiest way to do the effect, and still it is pretty hard to do the effect. It can get a little tricky. Now, I know last time I said if you've mastered that Matrix movie effect from before, well, if you can master this one, then you are surely a master of iMovie. Uh, one last thing to note, make sure we add in those sound effects. If you, the video effects are bad, but the audio effects are amazing. You might just be able to save your movie. 
poor audio can really take an audience member out of the movie. So what I do for my sound effects is I just go into Google and I type in video game sound effects and then I type in a video game like Counter-Strike or Call of Duty or something like that. A lot of people make their own sound effects because they don't like the sound effects that come with the game. Just type in sound pack, you know, video game something. Something like that, you can download the file, the audio files, and you can use them right into your iTunes and then from iTunes into iMovie using the little music note here to turn off your selection. I have a playlist called Sound Effects, so keep your music and audio and video special effects organized. So add in your sound effects, and then basically you have the movie the way it should be done. Hope that helps. Good luck. So, thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe. I make an iMovie tutorial every two weeks. Make sure you hit like so other knows this is a good tutorial. You can follow me on Twitter if you want to get updates that way. Make sure to check out the description. I put a lot of work into the description. It provides a nice outline for the tutorial. Frequently asked questions are answered in there. If your question is not answered in the description, feel free to leave a comment and I will do my best to respond. If you have a special effects request, also post that as a comment. So once again, thanks for subscribing. I look forward to helping you with your movies and your future projects.